Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two parts to my talk. And the first part, what I want to do is introduce um, how a conglomeration of researchers have come together, uh, not only from California, but also from, uh, uh, from other parts of the country, to uh, come up with some early detection methods, uh, as well as to, uh, on a more of a molecular scale, understand the basis for the disease. Um, and then I'm going to go and um, talk to you a little bit about what we've actually done and, and, and how, far we, uh, how far we've come in the short amount of time that we've started to work in this area. Uh, so I don't think I need to really go through this slide in a lot of detail, uh, but just to remind everybody that uh, this is a very serious disease, uh, and between 2005 and 2012, um, 8,200 jobs were lost and 4.5 billion in lost crops in Florida um, uh, happened. And now we're sitting here in, with the real possibility that 85% of the fresh citrus in, in California is going to uh, is going to go out the window, uh, and so we have to find a way to, to be able to detect this early. The uh, bacterium that actually causes this disease, the HLB or Hong Kong Hong Bing, is uh, Candidatus liberibacter asiaticus, or CLAS for short, and it attacks all citrus species and hybrids. It resides in the phloem, and perhaps most importantly, and, and what this has been so difficult in really being able to study this is the fact that this bacterium is non-culturable, which means that we can't take the bacterium, isolate it, and grow it up in a culture and try to understand its properties and try to find ways to combat it. Because it only resides within the tree, we can only really study it within the tree, and that, is, that presents a lot of problems for researchers. So the current gold standard testing for uh, this pathogen uh, is the PCR method, or polymerase chain reaction method, um, and what this, and, and I thought, I, I'm not sure how familiar everybody here is, is about this method, but I thought I would spend a couple of, uh, or about a minute or so just talking about it. This method, basically what it's used is just to amplify bacterial DNA. So if, if we have uh, DNA uh, that's specific, we want to find a specific region of DNA inside uh, the bacterium that we want to detect, uh, we, we now we, we um, uh, design a primer or a specific region of DNA on that pathogen. We add nucleotides, polymerase enzyme, and then we go through cycles of heating and cooling where we, we, when we heat it up, we separate the DNA strands, and then we can elongate the primers, and we can actually double the amount of DNA every time we go through this process. So over a period of time, in the right reaction, we greatly enhance uh, a particular um, sequence of DNA, and then we can actually detect it. The problem with PCR, and it's not just looking in plants or looking at Candidatus liberibacter, it's the same thing happens when we look at trying to detect uh, bacteria in, in humans if we're trying to do human diagnostics, and that is it really depends on how much bacteria you have present in your sample. So if, if you're not able to sample, if your sample's not a good sample, if it doesn't contain the bacteria, uh, or you're, you just don't have the right kinds of primers, uh, then it's very difficult to uh, detect, or your sensitivity becomes very low. And so um, that's you know, I, I, and, and so that's one of the main things that we have to really think about when we're when we're looking at uh, detection methods is that we don't really want to have something that's going to be just totally dependent on the number of bacteria we have, because not what that what's going to happen is is we have to then rely on uh, a certain amount of growth of that bacteria in order to detect it. So, um, to give you a little bit of an update of what's happened in California, I'm sure everybody knows this. Um, in 2012, there was one tree with HLB symptoms that tested positive for the CLAS by a PCR in an urban area of LA County in Hacienda Heights. Um, and since then, no adjacent trees have tested positive by either either the Citrus Research Board or the CDFA via PCR. Now, we know that the Asian citrus psyllid is found throughout Southern California and is now starting to make its way up in the Central Valley. Uh, and so, this represents a significant problem. Are there more trees that are affected? If we think about HLB, the fact that it was discovered in Florida in 2005, and now the entire state, so we're just nine years later, the entire state is affected by the disease, um, I think that uh, it doesn't bode well for us 
that this could be something that would be um, kind of lying in wait. So several researchers have gotten together, uh, and this was sort of um, uh, brought together by the Citrus Research Board. Um, at, at UC Davis, we have uh, my lab, we have uh, Christina Davis's lab, and Nita Coker's lab, together with Wenbo Ma and Hai Ling Jin from UC Riverside, uh, Michelle Celia at Cornell, uh, Jim Bruce at the University of Washington, and Glenn Seller at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, to look at this problem on a more mechanistic level and also to come up with better early detection methods. So the experiment essentially is uh, an experiment where we're looking at several different varieties and two different ways of inoculation. So we're looking at lizard lemon, table mandarin, parent Washington navel. We're looking at both ACP inoculation and graft inoculation. And we're, we're setting up longitudinal sampling. So we'll be sampling, uh, in some cases, um, once a week, other cases once every two weeks, and then still others you know, once a month. And we'll be looking at what sort of changes are going on. That's going to be really important because we're going to be comparing that to a gold standard testing, the PCR testing, which we know takes a long time in order to pick up the pathogen itself. So what we want to do is determine which of these methods is able to detect changes in the plant or is able to detect infection the earliest. Of course, that's the primary goal for if we want to have pre-symptomatic detection. The second thing that we want to do is we want to bring all of this data together at the end of the experiment, and we want to try to, to, try to understand and get mechanistic inf information on how that pathogen is actually causing the changes in the citrus and causing the citrus to die. Understanding all of this mechanistic information is going to provide us with tools with which we can now come back and understand um, uh, how to um, come up with new ways with which to treat the disease, either at the insect level, at the plant level, or in some other way. 